The Qbot X19, more specifically, the box for the Qbot X19. Now, I'm not going to do an unboxing because they're always the same with phones now. You get the phone, you get the charging cable, you get the charging adapter, usually some sort of manual, a SIM card tray opening device type thing, and that's about it. So, with this one, before I show you the phone, we're going to go and look at the specs. So, the Qbot X19, it has a gyroscope, it's USB Type-C, very nice to see, 5.93 inch IPS display, uh, with a aspect ratio of 18.9, 4 gigabyte of RAM, 64 gig of storage. It has the MT6763T Helio P23 processor running at 2.5 gigahertz, and it's an octa core processor. And it's using the 16 nm process, so it's quite energy efficient, but not the most up to date. Got dual rear camera, so we've got 16 megapixels and 2 megapixels PDAF. Front camera, 8 megapixels, and it has got a 4000 mAh Lion polymer battery, which is very nice for a phone of this budget. And here it is. So it has got a really nice display. I'll just bring this in a little bit closer. Um, it's high resolution, um, which is very nice to see on a phone of this budget. We do have bezels at the top where we have the camera and the earpiece thing. <laughs> I don't even remember what you call that. Speaker, that's the one. And then at the bottom, you've just got another small bezel. There's no curves around the edges of the screen, but there are curves on the actual device itself. But the screen is very much squared off, which is uh, good if you are going to be playing games and things because it means nothing is off the display and very handy for watching films and YouTube videos such as this one. Subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, so let's have a look around the phone. On the back we've got the two cameras. We've got the 16 megapixel and the 2 megapixel. And then we have a fingerprint sensor on the back. Just zoom in there so you can see that. It's very responsive, so I'll just show you. I'll lock the phone with the lock button and, well, you can't really see that, but I'll, I'll try and demonstrate it. So, put my finger on the fingerprint, and there we go. So, very quick, not the quickest on the market, but for a phone at this price point, very good, nice and responsive. And then, on the side, we have the usual, a lock button and volume up, volume down, rocker. Uh, on the top, we've got a headphone jack, a favourite of mine, something that I want to see on all devices. Uh, although I do actually use Bluetooth headphones now, so I'm not too bothered. And on the bottom, we have the USB-C connector, which can be used for data transfer or charging. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with a HDMI cable, uh, but that is kind of expected at this price point. There is two speaker grills on the bottom of the phone. However, only one of them actually works, so the speakers are mono, but there is a, a gap there. With the screen, it has a resolution of 1080 by 2160 pixels, which is now commonly known as HD+. And it does display 16 million colours with a pixel density of 407 pixels per inch. It does support multi-touch, and it does have 2.5D curved glass. Uh, which is nice. The back of the device is a seemingly a plastic. Yeah, that's definitely a plastic. Uh, but it's quite a, a subtle design. There's not much branding on there. You've got the Qbot um, logo there. But other than that, no branding, which is quite nice to see. As sometimes these cheaper phones do have a lot of branding. So with the UI, it's Android 8.1, which isn't currently upgradable to Android 9 or indeed Android 10. However, it is very much stock Android. It's very responsive to touch. And there is absolutely no bloatware on here whatsoever. You just get a wireless update app from the manufacturer. Everything else is stock, which is really nice to see. 
terms of the camera, video you can record up to 1080p at 30 frames per second and there is image stabilisation, so it's electronic image stabilisation, it's not a physical manifestation. Uh, with photos and pictures, I'm going to put some on the screen and comment on what these photos look like, but there is a HDR option there. This first clip here is taken with the image stabilisation switched off. So I'm just going to pan round on what is quite a dingy landscape. And this next one is with image stabilisation on. I can't really tell the difference to be quite honest with you. Few selfies taken here. I've put HDR on here and unfortunately it's made the top of my head go bright orange. Uh, I can assure you it wasn't this colour on the day that I was taking it. HDR off with a bit of um, unusual light here. Uh, part of it on my face and some of it in the shadows. You can see quite a good quality selfie there. Uh, another one there, HDR on again. It's pulled out some horrific orange <laughs> on my face. Uh, which, again, I assure you, isn't normally there. There we go, that's without it on. So, still quite a lot of uh, bloom on my head. So, I might have to uh, adjust that. So, if you're going to take selfies, don't take them in direct sunlight unless you want to look like Donald Trump. Here's an indoor one. Shows you how bad my skin is, but never mind. It does look slightly less orange. So, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, there's one in different light. So, natural light coming from the side. Looks okay, very good for uh, for the price. And another one there, similar but at a slightly different angle. And one more with HDR on from just a slightly different angle but with the natural light still there and I've turned orange. I've used the phone now for about a week and as you can probably tell by the amount of gaming apps that I've put on here I've predominantly been using it as a gaming phone it does have dual SIM slots but one of those SIM slots can be used for an SD card and you can install apps onto the SD card that has not been blocked by the manufacturer so very open phone with a very good screen uh, we'll take a look at the processor when we're running some games uh, but so far so good. Let's take a look at some games. I'm going to be using this which is a retractable controller from iPega. I will put a link in the description below but it does have all the expected buttons. So I'm just going to put the phone in there like so and I did just touch the uh, volume rocker there by accident but there are apps you can get so that this will rotate to a landscape view which might be an idea if you're going to be using this for the purpose of gaming okay so first up we have real racing 3 which runs very nicely and it looks absolutely stunning on this display with this uh, controller it almost feels like I'm playing on a Nintendo switch only with a higher resolution which is very nice whoops but yeah this uh, this is a gorgeous game really um, I would definitely recommend playing this on uh, on this device if you can but yeah no uh, no stuttering even there where I crashed everything looks pretty pretty good I've just completed a lap and I've completed my goal so we'll have a look at another game and here is Minecraft so I've just got this on the default settings and I'm just doing it on uh, creative as you can see it's absolutely gorgeous the draw distance is quite impressive and there's literally no slowdown whatsoever uh, so it's really uh, rather nice uh, I'm not going to show you all the settings or anything because the way I see it if you want to play games casually on uh, on an Android device then the way to do that is just by installing them and just jumping straight in it's more convenient and usually the games are set up and optimized straight out the box okay so here we have Fortnite which seems to run okay uh, the frame rate's not in amazing but it's definitely playable but I have seen it perform better on other devices however at this price point 
you've got a playable version of Fortnite that you can take around with you. And here is a bit of GTA San Andreas. And again, very nice. The game looks spot on. It's very responsive. Not any sort of lag or slowdown, so very much playable. And of course, you can use this controller to make the experience even better. Okay, so a bit of emulation now. So here's the PSP. This is Outrun 2006 Coast to Coast. I've got it on 1X, so it's on the uh, original PSP resolution. It's very playable, um, but it doesn't look particularly great. But uh, it's one of my favourite games, so I like it anyway. <laughs> we'll try some more emulation now. And here we have got SSX on tour for the PSP again. 1X resolution. It's uh, very playable, um, sort of. Some of the uh, textures look a bit strange. <laughs> but it's, it's definitely playable. And just to give it a bit more context, here I've put the resolution up to 3x and it's still running at about the same speed. So no issues there. Looks uh, a lot better now. Uh, it looks better than the original PSP experience. So that's great news. And here we have FIFA 14 on the PSP emulated again. So this is 3x PSP with auto frame skip on and yes I am England and I'm playing Bradford City. For a nice casual uh, game of FIFA this is perfect, works really well, um, it's better than the mobile game to be honest, uh, plus you can use a controller rather than on screen controls but you do have the luxury of being able to choose between on screen or hardware controls. So in terms of gaming, I'd say you get really good value. I mean, don't expect this to, to run some of the games like um, God of War, Chains of Olympus. Uh, it's just not going to happen. But the majority of PSP games will run at a speed where they are definitely playable and very much enjoyable. Now we'll look at something completely different that I don't normally do with devices, but I am doing today. Okay, so what we've got here is the phone itself with a USB to USB, sorry, USB-C to normal USB female. Uh, and that is connected up to the back of this mixer, which is a Pioneer DJ Wego 3. Now the Wego 4 will work with this as well. Uh, and the current setup I've got is I've installed the DJ app, which is free, um, I do believe and connected it up and now I have full control over the two decks so you can actually see in a moment how good the latency is on this phone so anyone who's done any sort of DJing or music production or anything any live device such as this you really need to make sure that the latency is low otherwise when you're listening through your headphones or when you're moving the controls it, it may have a bit of a delay and that'll affect the quality of your performance. So let's uh, let's give it a go. So I'm just gonna, I've got speakers up over here somewhere. Uh, I'm just gonna play two copies of my uh, channel's theme tune so that I avoid copyright. Um, so here goes. So if I do the crossfader like this, you can see how long it's taking to move on the screen. And also you can hear the audio. So. It seems to actually be faster on the audio than it is on the screen. So so the latency is really good actually. Uh, we'll try it with uh, turning down the bass. This is actually one of the best Android devices I've seen for latency. Um, I do normally test tablets rather than phones. But everything seems good to go so let's uh, see if we can mix in the uh, the theme tune I'm just gonna drag it back to the beginning handy thing about this setup is if you want to just kind of get to a place in the song you can just pick up the needle but also you have the wonderful queuing jog wheels um, so you can set where you want to start it so 
Ooh. I've got no headphones here, so I'm, I'm kind of doing this without being able to hear it, but uh, <laughs> I'll go back to the cue point and I'll just try and do it without listening to it, see what happens. So we're slightly out, there we go. You can use a jog wheel to correct that. And I'll take the bass out, the one that's originally been playing, and the middle. And slowly, we are fading in to the new one. So, a lot of storage on this phone, so you could fill it with your music collection, or if you've got Spotify, you can connect it up to Spotify and DJ with the tracks off there. There we have it. This phone, just remember how cheap this is. The Qbot X19, I've barely scratched the surface of what this thing's capable of. At such a low price, with such high spec hardware, there's just nothing to not like about this phone. <laughs> I, I genuinely, I'd recommend this phone, not even as a phone. I, as you see in the video just then, I've, I've not even really used it as a phone. Uh, I haven't put a SIM card in it, I've just used it on Wi-Fi and I love it. <laughs> this is now my go-to gaming device. I'm not even joking. Um, <laughs> it's so fun. Just using using a phone like this as... Well, as a portable gaming device. Emulation, Android games, Bluetooth compatibility so that you can play games with a decent controller. If you're looking for a phone to play games on, that, that just sounds ridiculous, but I've done it. <laughs> it's amazing. If your budget is around 100 bucks or 100 pounds for people who live near me, uh, then this, this is your baby. This is the phone to go for. Um, just, Incredible. Usable cameras if you've got the right light. Just be careful when you're taking selfies to make sure that you switch HDR off. Otherwise you end up with an orange face. Other than that though, the front camera, fantastic. Even recording the video at 1080p. Bit of digital jitter but it, it looks the part. It, it's good enough. Bottom line, I definitely recommend this. Uh, even to use as a phone, though I've not tried it. It might be terrible. I don't think this device lacks anything at this price point. Absolutely phenomenal for the money. Anyway, that's all I'm saying for now. I am going to be trying something new. A lot of the time people ask in the comments, oh, can you try this game? Can you try that game? Can you try this emulator? Can you try that game on this emulator? New rules. Ask me on Twitter or ask me on my Facebook page and I will put a short clip of what you wanted me to test. Uh, because I don't really want to clog up my channel with little short videos of gameplay, that kind of thing. So, yeah, if you're not following me on Twitter or you're not following me on Facebook, then follow the links below, get signed up, get asking me questions. I'll put short clips on there. I really don't mind. It takes me a couple of minutes to download an app, put some gameplay on, and you've got an answer to your question then. Anyway, right, that's it. If you're not yet subscribed and you want to see more of my brutally honest Yorkshire reviews, then hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. See you later.